In yesterday's video, we beat some information out of a Legionary prisoner to discover that the Legion had a spy at McCarran Airport, which is the headquarters of the NCR. After spending over an hour looking for clues, we finally discovered and put an end to the spy, saving the Las Vegas Boulevard monorail and the lives of God knows how many NCR soldiers. Now, we need to get to the bottom of the missing personnel, of the missing troops. We learned from Colonel Shu and then again from Lieutenant Kerry Boyd about the missing Ranger Anders. We already found him when I did my video on Vault 3, which you can watch here. But after talking with Boyd about Anders, we find an option to ask, is there anyone else missing? Yeah. The man I'm more interested in is Corporal White. White had a lot of promise, wanted to be a Ranger as bad as anyone I've seen. But he also had some extracurricular activities going. Now he's gone. I'll see what I can find out about Corporal White for you. Word around the bases, he'd been going regularly to visit a hooker named Dazzle at Gamora. That's a casino on the Strip. Classy place. His belongings are up in the barracks in the concourse building. First bunk on your left if you're facing it from the center. I haven't had a chance to look through his things yet, so that might be a good place to begin. So, Corporal White was an ambitious soldier who sought to become a ranger. But he was not above his vices. Looks like we'll have to head to Gamora to talk with a hooker there named Dazzle. But first, Carrie Boyd sent us to inspect Corporal White's locker. To do so, we head down the long hallway to the concourse. On the other side of the concourse doors, we begin to walk down this hallway when we spy a woman sitting by herself on some chairs to the left. The odd thing about her is she's clutching a pistol in her hands, and she doesn't seem to be very happy. This is Private Christina Morales. Did the Colonel send you? I... I was hoping he might have changed his mind. You look upset. What's wrong? I know. I've been crying. Stupid. I'm supposed to be a soldier. You hope the Colonel changed his mind about what? My husband. He's a ranger, and he... He got murdered by a pack of fiends. Goddamn savages laid his body out to rot. Brass won't say it to me straight, but they mean to leave Esteban out there. I can see that plain. Oh no. How did your husband die? He was out on patrol. Bunch of drugged up fiends attacked them. Esteban laid down cover fire while the others fell back. One of the men saw him get shot. He didn't die though. Not then. They tried to go back for him, but there were too many fiends and they had to pull out. Damn savages chased them halfway to McCarran. It seems strange the NCR wouldn't do their best to retrieve a fallen comrade. Colonel says he can't spare the men to bring Esteban back home. And the fiends, they put all kinds of mines and traps around his body. Snipers, too. Well, if your husband is dead, what does it matter if you get the corpse back? You never lost anybody, have you? Not like this. Never had to think about that person you love all alone out there, cooking in the sun like meat. NCR never leaves a soldier behind. <laughs> That's what the recruiters told us. Promised us. We believed them. No one else will help you? His best friend, Jackson, tried. Didn't even get permission from his CO, so it could have cost him a lot. But he never came back. Not my problem. Goodbye. Not your problem. Right. That's the motto in this town. Rotten people. Rotten place. I'm sorry for your loss. I hope the Colonel reconsiders. So do I. But I know he won't. Ain't important enough in the scheme of things, you know? Still, thanks for listening. Or we can try to get money out of this poor grieving widow by saying, I can bring his body back, but it'll cost you. Caps. This whole rotten town wants caps. Nobody does anything just because it's right. Fine. You want caps? You can have all of Esteban's back pay. NCR owes me, and I don't even want the damn money. With that, she shares with us the details, but we lose karma. Or, if we just want to give this woman some closure, we can simply say, don't worry, I'll recover your husband's body. Ma'am, I'd about given up hope. But you've got to be careful. I don't want anybody else dying on my account. Esteban's body is laid out between some of the buildings, east of the Repcon headquarters. At least that's what his squad mate said. There's an NCR position just north of there. It's on the way. They should be able to tell you what the situation is. With that, we get the location of her husband's corpse added to our map, and she hands us a note, Retrieve the corpse of Ranger Morales. 
Private Morales has asked me to find and retrieve the corpse of her dead husband. His body is apparently being used as a lure to draw in NCR troops and slaughter them. Better keep a lookout for traps and snipers. The body is just east of Repcon headquarters, and we should carry it to the troopers camped out on the north side of the railroad tracks. Oh, this is awful. But wait a minute, why did we come in here? Oh yeah, we had to raid Corporal White's locker. We find his locker directly on the other side of this wall in the section to the left. These are the troop's barracks, and his locker is the first one to the left. Inside, all we find is Corporal White's journal. I pulled the log from the East Pump Station computer for the last week. Looking back over the past several weeks, the times are roughly consistent, but there's definitely something going on. Water shouldn't even be going over to the west side, and yet the log says otherwise. I know I'm onto something. And then we find the log that he's talking about. West side, south cistern. 1011, 1027, 1035, 1005, and 1055. West side, north cistern. 402, 416, 405, 438, and 453. These appear to be times of the day where water is accessed from the southern and northern cisterns in west side, and the times appear to be fairly consistent. Any time at 10 in the morning from the southern cistern, and any time around 4 p.m. at the northern cistern. I guess this means that Corporal White discovered that someone was stealing water from the NCR in west side. But as we head out, we see poor Private Morella is sitting here. I really can't bear the thought of her sitting there suffering any longer, so we're going to help her first. The Repcon headquarters is just south of Camp McCarran, so it makes more sense to do this first anyway, rather than go north to Gamora first. Now, if we fast travel to the Repcon headquarters, which I covered in another video, we immediately come under fire from the fiends. We fast travel right into the middle of their ambush. So a better solution is to either walk there from the gates of Camp McCarran or to fast travel to the wreckage of Cassidy Caravan and walk south. This area is also surrounded by fiends. We walk past that warehouse, which we explored in my video on the Van Graffs. And of course, out here we find a bunch of fiends walking around. Once these are clear, we see the Repcon headquarters off to the east, and we find a road looping from the headquarters that goes south. As we walk along the road, we find the road blocked with a sandbag barricade, and the blockade is manned by two NCR soldiers. Whoa, 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 hold up. Where do you think you're going? Out of my way. Hey, it's your life. Oh, I'm going to take this basket of cakes to my grandmother's house. All right, smartass, I get it. You don't answer to us. But get this straight. You will get eaten alive if you go up that way. And that's not a figure of speech, either. Bunch of sick, messed up junkies control the road up there. Got a thing for desecrating corpses. You've been warned. I'm just passing through. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Those buildings up ahead are crawling with psychos. This is as far up as we've been able to safely set up a position. If you go any further, we can't protect you, understand? Or we can be civil with this guy and say, I'm here to retrieve the body of Ranger Morales. Christina hired you, huh? Well, if you're gonna go up there, there's a couple things you should know. Esteban's body is in the middle of those buildings up the hill there. Look carefully and you can see the fiends patrolling the rooftops. But they laid traps, too. There's mines all over. So for God's sakes, watch your feet. Get him back here. We'll get him home. Understood. Thanks for the help. At least we can do. Wish we could help more. He says he wishes he could do more, but peering off to the southeast, we see the fiends on top of the nearby buildings. They're clearly well within reach of almost any rifle. I don't understand why these guys just don't start picking off the fiends, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Telling our companions to wait here, we see a sky bridge off to the southeast. This is going to give us the height advantage we need to knock these guys off the roofs. Climbing up the sky bridge, we can leap on top of the railing and take aim. There's one more. 
I tagged her once, but she didn't die. But I don't see her on the roof anymore. I must have knocked her off. It's a good thing I got here when I did. The fiends were taking pot shots at the nearby Repcon robots. And I'd hate to see the poor Mr. Handys destroyed. Well, with the roof mostly clear, we can take the road southeast and creep along this wall. Not exactly sure where she landed. As we round the corner, we discover Ranger Morales' corpse. His body lies on the ground at the base of a nearby lamppost. We see the leg of another body sticking out of these bushes and some frag mines on the ground. That's right, in addition to the snipers, Morales' widow told us that they had booby-trapped the area. Creeping to the east, we see that the ground is littered in bear traps. We can go through and disarm each of them for the experience. Now where is that fiend? Our pit boy tells us that she is off to the west, but we don't see her on the roof. Oh! Oh, she glitched through the roof and fell down on the other side of this building's wall. Oh, she's stuck in the geometry. Oh, great. Well, the only way to get rid of her aside from using console commands is to show ourselves. She'll race towards us through this wall, and then we just pick off her limbs as they become exposed. And we get her. We won't be able to loot her corpse, but at least she's dead. Now we can more thoroughly explore this area for traps. We disarm a few frag mines near to the corpses, and we see that the corpse by the bush was the corpse of a fiend we knocked off the roof. Then we see an alleyway to the north, and this alleyway is booby-trapped. We find our rigged shotgun and a tripwire. Now remember when we talked with Esteban's widow, we asked her if anyone else tried to help, and she said that Esteban's best friend, Ranger Jackson, went off to try and collect the corpse, but that he never came back. Well, sometimes we find his corpse in this alleyway. He must have triggered the tripwire and got shot by the shotgun. But I read online that sometimes the corpse does not appear, and that was the case in my game. I couldn't get Ranger Jackson to appear. At any rate, we can continue to explore, and we clear almost everything, except we didn't check this bush. Alright, right, where is it? Where is it? Well, I almost got out unscathed. But that seems to be the final booby trap. Now we need to retrieve the corpse. Standing over the body of Ranger Morales, we can pick him up over our shoulder. Looting Ranger Morales' corpse is a great way to get Ranger patrol armor pretty early in the game. It's a bit of a walk to the NCR barricade, but once we get there... Oh my god, are you okay? You've got to get to a medic. Doc Kemp can patch you up back at base. How could you sacrifice your body like that? You never even met him. If the NCR doesn't have a medal for this, they should make one up. We could be rude and say, Now both the fiends and the NCR will know not to mess with me. Yeah, well, it looks like it might be too late for the fiends, but we got the message, loud and clear. Or we could offer false humility and say, I just did what anyone else would have done. Oh, bullshit. What anybody else would have done is get their asses killed. You're leading some kind of charmed life. Or we can say, I made a promise to Private Morales. That must be some kind of code of honor you hold yourself to. You're like a woman possessed. We'll make sure Ranger Morales' body gets sent back home. You don't have to, you know, pick him up on your shoulder and haul him to California. Even though I believe you would if you had to. You should go tell Private Morales the news. I know she'll be relieved. The soldiers said they would take it from here so we can leave Ranger Morales' corpse here. Incidentally, this is a potential Legion assassination point. I got rushed just as I was about to fast travel away. When ready, we can head back to Camp McCarran to check in with the grieving widow. Did you start looking for Esteban? I guess my directions could have been better. I brought his body to an NCR position. He's on his way back to McCarran. They put him in a box? With a flag and all? I hope so. He'd have been proud. You're too good for this rotten town. First kind thing anybody ever did for me in Esteban. You ever need anything, all you need to do is ask. Thank you so much. I find it really disturbing that she openly carries that pistol in her hand. I hope she doesn't do anything rash when she's back home, alone, and missing her husband. I have to admit this quest hit me harder than I thought it would. They really didn't sugarcoat this experience. Feels better knowing that Esteban's not out there in the waste, but he's still gone, you know? 
But now we have another body to find, and this one might still be alive, if we're fast enough. We need to find Corporal White, and the last clue we found was that he likes to hang out with a hooker at the Gamora Casino named Dazzle. We actually remember Dazzle. When we did our series on Gamora, she was one of the prostitutes whom we... <clears throat> got to know. She reminds us of this when we head out to the courtyard to say hi. Back again? Did you miss me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Not now. Actually, I had a question. Have you ever spent time with a trooper named White? Yeah, he used to come around here a lot. Haven't seen him in a while, though. Why? She has the exact same response to all three of these options. So we can say, did he ever tell you anything about what he was up to? He used to go on and on about water and the farms east of the Strip. He was talking to one of the farmers named Bascom. Had some problem with NCR. Boring as hell, but it was his money and his time. So I let him talk about whatever. Sounds like this guy needed to work on his pillow talk. But we got our next clue. She mentioned a farmer named Bascom. Farmer, where do we find farmers? Well, we find a bunch of farmers at the NCR Sharecropper Farms. Heading on over to the NCR Sharecropper Farms, we find a farmer named Trent Bascom farming the maze. Howdy, something else I can help you with? You work these fields? Sure do. Came from the hub on account of the Thaler Act. Farming's decent work, but the whole thing's a bum deal. What's the Thaler Act? Something the politicians back in Shady Sands came up with. They pay us to move here and farm the land. They even protect the fields. What are NCR troopers doing here? They're part of the deal. The Thaler Act. We work the fields while they protect the crops and the water. A lot of folks come to New Vegas and lose everything in free side of the Strip. They get hungry, desperate, and try to take our hard work. Much as I sympathize, their theft would put me in a bad spot. I got a crop quota to beat. What kind of crops do you grow? Everything I can. Farmers out here don't have the luxury of being picky. I get by mostly on maize and tobacco. I'm looking for a man named Corporal White. I was told that he'd spoken to you. Yes. He said he was looking into the water shortage, but I haven't heard back from him. Got the feeling he wasn't here in any official way. White was talking to me about computer stuff and water delivery schedules through the pipes, but I'm just a farmer. Tech stuff is beyond me. The last person I saw him talking to was Lieutenant Romanowski. Romanowski's around here somewhere. Sorry I couldn't be more helpful. Okay, guess we'll check in with Lieutenant Romanowski. Thankfully, we find him just a short walk away, guarding the crops. What is it? What can you tell me about these fields? Impressive, aren't they? You don't see anything like this outside of NCR territory, that's for sure. We get the water, clean water, pumped in from Lake Mead. If you follow the big pipes, they'll take you all the way to the lake. Why are these fields being guarded? A lot of the crops grown here support the various NCR camps in the region. McCarran, Goff, and Forlorn Hope, to name a few. We can't have wastelanders popping in here for a free meal, so my squad and I are assigned to keep things from going to hell. I'm looking for Corporal White. Trent told me you'd seen him. Corporal White is currently solving the mystery of the great water shortage. Tried to convince me he had proof even. I didn't buy any of it. He went over to Westside to talk to Tom Anderson. Anderson's a follower of the apocalypse. Helps the people in Westside grow crops or something. And the chain grows longer. Now we have to go to Westside to talk with someone named Tom Anderson. Well, what can you tell me about the followers of the apocalypse? They're based out of the old fort in Freeside. They supposedly helped the NCR out at some point, but they go their own way now. They know stuff about tech and medicine and usually help out anybody who asks. Can't say I know any more than that. You haven't heard anything more from White? Haven't seen him. Serves him right if the NCR declares a Maywall. Hmm, do you have something against White? He's a glory hound. Always looking for a way to get promoted to Ranger. Thinks he's too good to be a regular trooper like the rest of us. Oh, goodness. Sounds like Romanowski is jealous of the man's ambition. What's wrong with someone aspiring to become a ranger? Well, to follow up on our next clue, we need to head to Westside. We explored Westside a little bit when I did my video on Cook Cook. Some of his victims lived in the nearby Casa Madrid apartments. And when I did my video on The Thorn. But today we return to the Casa Madrid apartments in hopes of finding a man named Tom Anderson. It is, after all, the likeliest place in Westside to find him. Immediately upon entering the apartments, we take the right path and then go west down the hallway. His room is the second to the right. Tom Anderson, can I help you? What do you do here? 
I'm with the followers of the apocalypse, and I help the locals in Westside grow crops. Unlike the NCR, the followers don't expect anything back. The soil in the hot, dry environment don't make it easy, but we get by all right. We've even got our own food store, the Westside Co-op, complete with basic refrigeration. Tell me about the co-op. The co-op is comprised of Westside locals and read by Clayton Entenine. They produce all of their own food and share the profits of the co-op. Do you have a problem with the NCR? I don't go looking for fights with them, but they don't have the best interests of people in mind. Certainly not locals. The bottom line for NCR is productivity and growth. Politicians back in Shady Sands are completely detached from the people actually living here. I heard Corporal White came here to investigate a water shortage. No one by that name has come here, I'm afraid. You must have heard wrong. You can ask around if you like. They'll all tell you the same thing. Now, at this point, we have a couple of options. We could pass a high intelligence check to suggest that he is lying. Or if we have a high reputation with the followers of the apocalypse, we can encourage him to tell us the truth. But if we don't have either, then we need to find hard evidence that Anderson knows more than he's letting on. And to do so, we need to explore West Side. Immediately to the right, as we exit the Casa Madrid apartments, we find the doors to the West Side Co-op. This is the food store of West Side that Anderson was so proud about. It even has basic refrigeration, remember? The people of West Side produce all of the food that's sold here and they share the profits. Well, that sounds fantastic. Heading into the co-op, we see a dimly lit grocery store with meager resources spread around the racks. And we find the man in charge of the co-op, Clayton Etienne, standing behind the counter to the West. Hi there, welcome to the West Side Co-op. I'm Clayton Etienne. Let me know if you have any questions. Tell me about the co-op. It might not look like much, but it's what keeps us West Side locals independent. We started it a few years ago. I admit we had a lot of trouble at first, but eventually we got some help from Tom Anderson with the followers. We're finally to the point where the co-op members can start making money from sales instead of just breaking even. What's your story? Well, I've lived in Nevada all my life. Started out in New Reno, but headed down here as soon as I got the chance. If you can believe it, things are even worse back home. The whole city's still run by crime families. Used to be the Mordinos and Wrights. Now it's the Wrights and Van Graffs. Seems like things never got better. Anyway, that's all behind me now. Show me what you have for sale. All right. He has a decent stash of cabs in his inventory, making him a pretty good resource for selling excess ammunition to make some money. He has a few magazines, but most of his store consists of produce and some boxed goods. Well, it's good to see Westside doing so well for themselves, but we didn't find any clues about Corporal White from Etienne. So heading outside, we can turn right, passing a ruined car and a big scrap barricade. We find one of the many farms here. We see a Westside citizen hard at work farming for maize and a variety of other crops. I'm glad mean son of a bitch is on our side. Mean son of a what? Who is she talking about? Well, we learn the answer to that question when we head back to the entrance to the Casa Madrid apartments. There we find a super mutant called mean son of a what? Uh, hi. Um, who are you? Masho Fabish. Uh, nice to meet you, Masho Fabish. A pleasure is a mark. Goodbye. Do you have trouble speaking? Mm-hmm. He points to the stump of a tongue in his mouth, so someone cut out his tongue. I have to go, Bob. Goodbye. What's a super mutant like you doing in a place like this? Ha ha ha. I wash my bone with Sibi. I have Bogo. Feeps a rope. Goodbye. Did he say... I watch my own, I watch my town, west side? Well, okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Goodbye. All right, I can understand why the west side citizens are glad to have this fine fellow guarding them. West side has a few other attractions, including a pawn shop called Miguel's Pawn Shop. We'll spend some time here a little bit later. We find another farm on the northern side of Westside. Here we find even more crops and Westside citizens hard at work. And in the northeast corner of this small little farm, we find a Brahmin laden in bags of water. And leading this Brahmin is a small boy named Hector. Hello again. What do you do here, Hector? I deliver things and stuff for the people here. They give me caps to do it. Do you know anything about a Corporal White? Corporal White? I don't know where he... Uh, I mean, I never heard of him. Uh, I gotta go. Hmm. 
We can pass an 80s speech check to suggest that poor little Hector is lying, but if our speech isn't high enough, our only option is to say, Are you sure you don't know anything? I gotta go. And with that, he rather hastily turns tail and walks away. But there was something about his demeanor that leaves me suspicious. So crouching down, we can follow this boy. And sooner or later, he leads his water brahmin towards a big utility door to the southwest. After he enters, we can creep closer to discover that this is the west side north cistern. So Hector is the one who's been entering these cisterns to preserve presumably steal water from the NCR. Stepping inside, sure enough, we find Hector drawing water from the cistern. Ha! I wasn't doing anything. Hector responds the same way to all three of these options, so we'll say, you look like you're gathering water, Hector. The west side isn't supposed to have a water supply. Uh, it's for the co-ops. Mr. Anderson told me to do it. He said it wasn't stealing if it's for the good of everybody. Did he? Yeah, that's kind of not how stealing works. Hector, again, has the same response to all three of these options. So we'll say, it's stealing no matter who it's for. Corporal White found out, didn't he? He caught me and made me tell on Mr. Anderson. I don't know what happened after that, but when I asked, Mr. Anderson said not to worry. But Mr. Anderson had this look on his face. It's the look grown-ups get when they've done something bad. Uh, oh, oh no. Don't tell me we have another corpse on our hands. Heading outside, we can race back to the Casa Madrid apartments and confront Tom Anderson. Good to see you again. We can choose any of these three methods to get Anderson to confess by passing an intelligence check to say that it's easy to figure out that the NCR water shortage points to Anderson. Fair enough. Since you seem to have pieced it together, I won't insult you by denying it any further. Or to say, you should know I've been helpful to the followers, so come clean about White if you know something. Some of the other followers mentioned you. All right, the truth then. Or, once we catch Hector red-handed, we can say, Hector told me everything. I suppose there's no point in denying it any longer. I killed Corporal White to protect Westside's self-reliance. It was rash, and I regret it now. We don't have money to pay for the water, so I rigged a pump station to divert water to the local cisterns from time to time. He killed Corporal White? Over this? I mean, I'm glad he regrets it, but that doesn't bring Corporal White back from the dead. Now that we know the full story, we can resolve this in quite a few ways. The most straightforward way is to say, I'm taking you out, Anderson. Then you leave me no choice. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Killing Anderson isn't going to bring Corporal White back. And it makes perfect sense that Arcade jumps in because Tom Anderson was a follower of the apocalypse. It's important how we respond to Arcade here because we either get history points, which we use to unlock his personal quest, or we gain history demerits, which could lead to Arcade leaving our company forever. We could say, Anderson killed White. He deserved to pay for what he did. Fantastic. Now the only influential person who gave a damn about Westside is gone. Great job. In case I'm not laying down enough sarcasm, you just screwed up the lives of a bunch of struggling people. Or we could say, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it would end like this. <sighs> Neither did Anderson. Or we can say, what's done is done. Well, I guess that means you don't have to apologize to all the people on Westside you just screwed over. In case you weren't paying attention, you killed the only person who ever gave a damn about him. Or if our intelligence is seven or higher, we find a new option here to say, you're assuming a motive without evidence. Please be rational. Fine. Would you mind explaining why you killed Anderson? Allowing Anderson to get away with murder tells him and everyone else that it's permissible. There are other ways to punish people. Other ways to condemn their actions. It was either this or spend the rest of his life in an NCR chain gang. That was his decision to make, not yours. It's cleaner this way. Without bringing NCR in, no connecting Anderson back to the locals. That's a grim deal to make. But when it came down to it, it's the same choice he made. Not all sacrifices are made by the willing. But where is the lamb for this burnt offering? 
the only way to walk away with a positive history point from Arcade if we choose the option to kill Anderson is to pass the intelligence check, which gives us one history point, and to say that it's cleaner this way. All other choices we make that end in Anderson's death leads to a history demerit. But if we choose to resolve the situation this way, on his corpse, we find Anderson's confession. If anyone other than me is reading this, it probably means that I'm dead, at the hands of whomever the NCR sent looking for Corporal White. I've bent or broken the law many times in my life, but it was always for the greater good. Such was the case with Corporal White. Killing him was regrettable but necessary. Had he been allowed to interfere, Westside would have been cut off from the NCR's water, and the crops here would wither and die. I wasn't going to let that happen. I've paid for my crime. Don't let the people of Westside suffer because of me. Tom Anderson. Ignoring this man's appeal, we can take the note as evidence all the way back to Lieutenant Boyd at Camp McCarran. You're back. I have an update on Corporal White. Don't tell me. He married the hooker. He was killed by a man named Anderson. He caught stealing water from the NCR. Anderson. I've heard of him if it's the same guy. Water nerd from the followers of the apocalypse. Used to handle some of the operations for OSI. I don't know what to think about the followers. The things they do. Hard to say if they're helping or hurting sometimes, especially in Freeside. I'll have to send some people out there to make sure we don't lose any more water. That stuff's like gold out here. But you. I owe you for this. You saved me a lot of work, and I'm sure Corporal White's family will be grateful to at least get some closure. The MPs keep a bunch of junk around that's confiscated off of people who decide to screw with us. I haven't really sorted through it, but go ahead and see if there's anything you can use in there. We keep it in a trunk across the hall, by the prison cells. With that, we complete the quest The Whitewash, and Lieutenant Boyd gives us the key to the MP confiscated goods trunk. We saw this in yesterday's video, though we didn't get to explore it at that time. With the key in hand, we can now go to the jail and open it without karma loss. Inside, we find a number of magazines, two doctor's bags, and a mentats. And if we completed the quest by killing Anderson, the next time we head to the sharecropper farms to talk with Trent Bascom... Our water ration suddenly increased. Can't help but think that you had something to do with it. We can say... Me? I have no idea what you're talking about. Sure you don't. All just a happy coincidence. Am I right? Or we could lie and say, the NCR admitted that there's bad pipes somewhere, and took care of the problem. Strangely enough, even though we see the subtitles here, this voiced dialogue was wrong in the game. So instead, I'll have to read what he said. That's what I figured. Don't know why the heck they're so stubborn they couldn't just admit it. Uh, that was my gruff old man farmer voice. <clears throat> Or we can be up front and say water was being diverted to West Side, but I took care of the problem. West Side, huh? I hope the NCR does something about those thieving bastards. I appreciate it, and so do the rest of the farmers. Maybe you don't want for food much, but you can sell these on the market for a good price. Like I said, we're much obliged for the help. Alternatively, instead of killing him, we have quite a few other options. We could say, I'd rather not turn you in, but someone else might come looking for you. If the NCR thinks White was killed by, say, members from the Scorpions gang, it may be enough for them to close the case. At this point, we could simply kill him, or we could agree up front with his lie and say, consider it done, or we could agree with a provision and say, yes, I could say that if the price was right. Perhaps a partnership in the co-op would be enough, say, 10% of daily profits. At this point, we can back out of the extortion, agree to it, or make it even worse by passing a barter check of 50 to say, I'm keeping a very big secret. 20% is fair. 20% it is. Ednin won't like it, but at least our secret will be safe. Thank you for keeping my secret. I'll make sure that nothing like it ever happens again. And if we choose to blame the Scorpions, Arcade has some thoughts. Interesting way of handling things. Very subrosa. I don't know if the Scorpions deserve to be wiped out for something they didn't do, but that's one less problem Westside has to deal with. If we chose to extort Anderson and the Westside co-op, the next time we head inside and talk with Etienne, we find an option to say, I'm here to talk to you about our new business arrangement. Oh, that, yeah. Anderson filled me in on the details. Just let me know when you'd like your order to be filled. Oh, I'm ready. I'm here for my special order. Yeah, it just came in. Here's all of it. 
And with that, we get a tidy stash of caps. If we try to muscle some more money out of this guy too soon, he says, I'm sorry, but your order won't be in for a while. Please come back in a day or two. And at this point, we can turn the quest in. But if we do, Etienne will no longer give us money every other day, even if we go along with the lie. The next time we talk with Boyd, we find an option to say, a gang called the Scorpions murdered him. A man named Anderson witnessed it. Shit. That's why you don't go wandering off looking for some call girl on the strip without telling somebody first. Anderson. Is that the followers of the apocalypse, Anderson? Yes, he wants you to increase water flow to Freeside. Said it would be lost otherwise. Man, that guy's got water on the brain. Knows more about water pipes than any man should. If he says we're losing water, I think the colonel would listen to that. I'll talk to him about it. But and with that, we complete the quest and get the key to the trunk. That last bit confuses me because this whole thing is about West Side, not Freeside, so I'm not sure why the courier would ask Carrie Boyd to send more water to Freeside. I suppose so that the citizens of Freeside don't have to depend upon the water pump owned by the kings. At any rate, the next time we go and talk to Trent Bascom at the Sharecropper Farms... You showed up just in time to say goodbye. Me and a couple of the others are packing it in and heading back to California. The water ration's still a problem, and the NCR doesn't look like it's going to do anything about it anytime soon. Ah, well, why can't you just grow fewer crops? I wouldn't be able to meet the quota, and the NCR would kick me out of my job anyway. Nah, it's better I get out on my own terms. Well, what are you going to do now? I hear the Brahmin ranchers out in Redding are looking for some hard workers, so I might try there first. I hate working with Brahmin, though. All right, well, goodbye, Trent. And again, his dialogue here is bugged. He says the wrong thing, so I'll say it for him. Good luck to you out there. <laughs> anyway, so looks like if we keep the secret, the farmers at the sharecropper farms are out of work, which I'd imagine severely hinders the NCR's ability to feed their own troops. But there is another way to go about this. Back at the Casa Madrid while talking with Anderson, we can instead say, if I don't turn you in, will you stop stealing NCR water? That's not a bargain I can accept. Westside depends on that water for survival and self-reliance. We can force the issue by saying, then I'll turn you in, and the water gets shut off. Then you leave me no choice. In which case we have to fight him. Or we can say, what bargain will you accept? Or you need to answer for your crime. Either of which garners the same response from Anderson. I'll surrender on one condition. You protect Westside's secret. Without that water, this community won't survive long. I'll say that White and I had a falling out over a woman. A crime of passion, if you will. No, I'm not going to lie for you. Then you leave me no choice. In which case we have to kill him. Or we can extort him again by saying, Say I keep West Side's secret, what's in it for me? In which case we get dumped back into that extortion dialogue again. The only difference between this choice and the last one is that in the last one, Anderson got to walk free, but in this one, he'll turn himself in. Or our final option is to agree, to promise to keep his secret, but insist that we still have to turn him in for the murder. Thank you. I won't make any trouble when they come for me. And with that, he walks off peacefully. We gain karma, and Arcade expresses his approval. Anderson turned in for the wrong reason, and Westside gets to keep siphoning water. It's hard to find justice in all of this, but I suppose this is as close as it gets. Thanks. If we choose this option, then we get a positive history point with Arcade. Heading back to Camp McCarran, we can check in with Boyd. You're back. I have an update on Corporal White. I've already talked to Anderson, actually. Came in, confessed, and gave you credit for the whole thing. First time I've ever seen anything like that. It was like you'd done him some huge favor. I gotta hand it to you. This dazzle must be some girl. And with Wait. that, we convince Boyd that White's death was a crime of passion over a Gomorrah prostitute, not a murder designed to conceal the fact that Westside is stealing water from the NCR. We complete the quest, we get the same key, and Westside continues to drain water from NCR pipes. If we head into the brig, we see Anderson on the other side of a cell, but he doesn't have any new dialogue for us, and we can turn around and loot the chest. But if we head back to the NCR sharecropper farms, we again again see that Trent Bascom is leaving town. Because they're not getting all of the water they need, they simply can't meet their quota, and the farms fail. So which is the most moral option here? 
Yes, the citizens of Westside need water, but they didn't build the pipes to Lake Mead. They're not pumping water from Lake Mead, and they're not spilling their blood guarding those pipes to keep them functional to make sure that water flows from Lake Mead. The NCR is doing all of that. Should they not have a say over who gets the water? After all, the water is going straight to the crops. Crops which feed the troops. Troops who are necessary to guard those water pipes to ensure that the water continues to flow. That the scorpions or the fiends or the legion don't destroy the pipes in an effort to subjugate the Mojave. The people of Westside can't guard those pipes. The people of Westside can't keep those pipes repaired. Who are they to demand water from them? And yet, the flip side to the coin is that the NCR does not own Lake Mead. The NCR has a poor reputation of handling lakes correctly, if Chief Hanlon is to be believed, and water is necessary for life. Who is the NCR to forbid people from drinking water from Lake Mead? This is a tough moral decision. Which one did you make in your game? Which one do you think is right? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But we're not quite done. We still have to confront Sergeant Contreras to learn exactly what's happening to all of the missing goods at McCarran. And we have to track down shipments of fresh meat for Faber and find some seasoning that will improve the mood of the troops. We'll tackle all of that in our next video in this series. I publish many videos each week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss the next video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Mankind Redefined. On one side, we have Da Vinci's famous Vitruvian Man, and on the other, we have a more rather synthetic version. The shirt comes in a wide array of colors and in a variety of both men's and women's sizes. You can also find the design on a bunch of other stuff, smartphone cases, mugs, prints, pillows, etc. So if you're interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a brand new episode. Thank <laughs> you.